Okay, in this experiment, we're going to look at, we're going to investigate the use of three different sugars as respiratory substrates for yeast. So we've got glucose, we've got maltose, which is two glucose molecules joined together, and we've got sucrose, which is a molecule of glucose and a molecule of fructose joined together. So in order to use glucose as a respiratory substrate, if the glucose is in the form of maltose, then that maltose has to be broken down by the enzyme maltase into gl two separate glucoses. And uh, sucrose is actually glucose and fructose. Again, we need an enzyme to separate the glucose and the fructose. And then obviously only half of the um, sucrose is made of the gl glucose. So in terms of ease of access and being able to use it as a respiratory substrate, you would expect glucose to be the best one. And therefore, the yeast would be able to use it, respire, produce carbon dioxide, and the level of liquid in our coloured tubes should drop the quickest. So what we're going to do is we're going to add yeast to our glucose, our sucrose, and our maltose solutions. One gram of yeast into each one. We're going to put the bung on the top so that all of the gas that's produced, the carbon dioxide gas that's produced by the respiring yeast, is forced into the coloured tubes, which will displace the water, causing the level to drop. I'm going to keep an eye on that over a period of two hours, check what it is every five minutes, and then hopefully by the end of the experiment, we'll be able to find out and prove which one is the best respiratory substrate for yeast. So we have our glucose solution, and I'm going to add some dried yeast to that glucose solution. Give it a little swirl around to mix it, and then we're going to pop the bung in which is going to trap any gas into our beaker. And if we have a look at the top of our line, it's currently sitting at a reading of 49. So I know that that's my starting volume and I'm going to set the others up in exactly the same way. And therefore, as my yeast start to respire and produce carbon dioxide, any of the bubbles of gas, and in actual fact, you can see a little bubble of gas popping up there. So, we'll get the other ones set up now. So, as you can see, the yeast is respiring, it's producing carbon dioxide gas, and you can see the bubbles of gas moving up the tube. As you can see, at the end of the experiment, we have gained 47 millilitres of carbon dioxide gas. And the coloured liquid in the tube has dropped as the carbon dioxide gas has gone in and that allows us to make that reading.